Hello and welcome to the 2023 Father Hennepin Parade. My name is John Cox and I am joined by Steve Boynton. And we are here and will be your co-host for the next hour as we are watching the 48th running of the Father Hennepin Parade. Here this time of year, John, we celebrate our heritage during the weekend of June. And we are situated at approximately at the midpoint of the parade route. Uh, where the bands, of course, will be playing, and we're looking forward to a great evening. Weather could not be better for this year's parade. They, they dialed it up perfectly for 2023. We're very excited about that. Two marching bands, 60 units. Let's watch some of the action. That signifies the official <laughs> official opening of this year's parade. You know, John, the festival honors Father Louis Hennepin, who was a Franciscan priest from Belgium, who in the mid 17th century was part of an expedition exploring America. He's been credited with bringing Niagara Falls and St. Anthony Falls to Europe's attention. And of course is also credited with crossing the Mississippi River at what is now known as the Mississippi Crossings. And his name is on a lot of stuff in the state of Minnesota. He, for somebody, for a Belgium who was only here for a short bit, a uh, lot of names on a lot of things, but we do honor him. He is the namesake, and that's why we are participating in a parade today, folks. Um, as always, the parade is being kicked off by the Hennepin County Sheriff's Office, aboard their equestrian unit with the colors. We've got the United States flag, POW flag, and it looks like Hennepin County flag. And if I'm not mistaken, that is is council former council member Julia Whalen aboard one of the horses well, this year or no? I was thinking the same thing. She has been a regular and uh, and very active in that group. I think she might be second from the left, if I recall, if that uh, council member for a number of years on the Champlain City Council. Carrying the POW flag. She got promoted to the county, so congratulations to Julia, and it's a great unit. Though I don't know how often they call get called into duty to chase down bad guys well yeah the horse thing is kind of gone <laughs> by the way <laughs> tougher to catch people in cars on horses and if you're going to have horses you have to have cleanup right always important and hennepin county uh is providing one of the finest to do that <laughs> i think she's going to need hopefully they got somebody to scoop that and store that so so we have the another unit from the county sheriff, Hennepin County. Uh, one of the boats that you might see on the um, river here in Champlain. Our very own firefighters. Always making a racket at the beginning of the parade. Kids love to heat, see the sirens and lights going. Long storied history with the fire department, with the white trucks. Uh, originally, City of Anoka Fire Department, now Champlain Anoka, many decades working together. Um, and a lot of, basically, a lot of it done with volunteers, right, Steve? These are paid on call firefighters, which means they get paid only when they respond to calls. Right. These are uh, paid volunteers that uh, we, the cities save many, many dollars as a result of their services. Uh, and they spend a lot of time training, doing what they do and doing it well. The white trucks are harken back to the origin of the fire department when they were horse-drawn engines that were white and so the fire department chose white as its color as opposed to a lot of lot of communities use red yes uh, this is a tribute to the original white horse drawn units
So we have the Historical Society coming into view here. One of the earlier units in the parade. I'm guessing that must be the Anoka County City of Anoka. Or could that be? We have a Champlain Historical Society too, don't we? We absolutely do. We and do. that looks like a vintage, maybe not too vintage, but a nice looking John Deere tractor as they come up here onto the route. We'll see what they're pulling, but it looks to me like yeah. almost a replica of Dunning School. Yes, no, you're right. It's the Champlain Historical Society and uh, a very well organized, small group, but hard working group uh, has, uh, if you haven't seen it, they have produced a well written history book of not only of Champlain, but of this region uh, that is well read uh, and is very also active in the Dunning School as well. Of course, this weekend, all weekend, uh, there's the ice cream social at Dunning School. Gives residents, if you haven't been down there, a chance to tour that one-room schoolhouse, which has been preserved in its original state, and share some ice cream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, those are some of the benches from the old schoolhouse. Really? And that is meant to resemble the Dunning School. Early 1900s, would that be fair when you went to school there, Steve? I did not go to school there, John. Did you? Was that? But, that was after? But of course, 1876 <laughs> to 1947. Oh, oh, oh 1800s. Uh, no, you wouldn't have gone there then. No, no. <laughs> not even 1947. <laughs> but thanks. You're welcome. Okay. What do we have coming in here, Steve? Also part of the Champlain Historical Society. We've got an old time tractor here. This one is wow. vintage. Take a look at that one, John. Now, you, we had talked earlier on our podcast, and we'll talk a little bit about that today, but you might have ridden on that. You used to be a farmhand here in Champlain. Were you not back our, in the day? Ours looked a little more modern than this Were they one, a little better John? than that? Yes, this looks like... Wow. That's, that, that's not a smooth ride. No, no. Those tires don't have air. Those are... <laughs> Wow, that is a, that's an old timer there. Yeah. The tractor I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this year's event, John, is bigger than any event that Champlain has hosted. This, this festival was originally held in 1929 and took a sabbatical for 47 years. The Depression, the Great Depression. Yes, right? all the way back to then. Uh, took a sabbatical for 47 years and was brought back in 1976 by the Bicentennial Committee. Back then, I can tell you, I was a young kid here. It was just a craft show and, 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 and some ice cream. Oh. And it has no, okay. evolved from that to what it is today. We're going to be going over some of the events that take place throughout the weekend, and it is massive. But before we get to that, before we get to that, we have coming into view this year's Grand oh, Marshal, yes. and it is our very own Todd Tuminen. Todd Tuminen. From the engineering part, uh, engineering department, both you and I had an opportunity to work with him. 33 years with the city of Champlain, recently retired, and being honored here as our Grand Marshal for 2023. Great to see Todd. You're going to have to excuse me, but I have to kind of clap a little bit. This is uh, an honor that's well overdue. So... Yep, he's ignoring us, he like kinda, he did when we worked with him. <laughs> I think so. So, yeah, 33 years, Todd was instrumental in uh, in the Elm Creek Dam, was instrumental in the uh, improvement along the whole creek area, Elm Creek area, and the restoration of that. It was his persistent. It was his relationships. Uh, it was his technical expertise that uh, drove that project. So credit to Todd, and uh, he is being recognized today as the Grand Marshal. We'll see if he uh, jumps out of the truck and 
has a few words to share or if he's just going to pause there and move along. Ah, yes, they are passing the microphone to Todd, so I think they we're going to hear a few words. We're going words. to hear a few words from Mr. Tuminen. Yeah, so 33 years, and prior to coming to Champlin, uh, Todd spent a good number of years down in Brooklyn Park. So his focus, energies, and attention professionally have been spent most of it in this area here. We've got Mayor Ryan oh, Savis yes, arriving yeah. with an entourage, including his wife Haley. I think he's jumping out and is okay. going to welcome Todd as the Grand Marshal. Now, t the mayor doesn't drive around in the truck with his name on it during the week, does he? Is this just special for the parade, would you say, or is this something new? No, no, he does that all week <laughs> long. <laughs> hey, just in case you didn't know. And he's got um, that speaker on the roof. That's and, you know, you probably get any handicap Tampa! stall wherever you want. What a great Father Hennepin. Start the Father Hennepin days. I'm so excited to be your mayor of Champlin. So I just want to introduce our Grand Marshal for the 2023 Father Hennepin Days Parade. His name is Todd Tumanen. I got a... Right here, Todd, right next to me. I had an opportunity to work with Todd for a number of years when I was a councilman in Champlin. And Todd is one of our former assistant city engineers. Todd served at Champlin for more than 33 years at the city. Round of applause for Todd. Some of Todd's more significant accomplishments include the restoration of the Elm Creek Dam and the Jefferson Highway Bridge. The restoration of the Mel Pond and creating trails and providing access around the Mel Pond. And the restoration of the stream banks and habitat of the Elm Creek, making it accessible, swimmable, boatable for your kayaks. It's a fantastic area, so thank you, Todd. Todd had an instrumental part in securing funding from the state, the county, and other govern governmental agencies to get funding for these projects. And it was a big task. Todd spent many days and hours down at our capital trying to get the funding, so thank you, Todd. Todd retired on July 30th of 2021, but we are proud today at the 2023 Father Hennepin Days to have you as the Grand Marshal. Once again, round of applause for Todd Tumanen. I'm gonna hand Todd a plaque here stating that he was the 2023 Father Hennepin Grand Marshal. Thank you, Todd. There you have it, folks. 2023 in the books. It's Todd Tuman at Assistant City. All right, Engineer. everybody, I hope you come on down to Father Hennepin, the festival, the concerts, and enjoy it and have a great time. Thank you. Todd told me earlier, too, join him down near the band tonight. He will be buying drinks for everybody. Well, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Can't miss out on that. No. Here comes Mayor uh, Savis to say oh a quick hello to us. This uh, is the man. Good to see you, Mayor. How are you, sir? Deputy Administrator. <laughs> nice job. He's got a, like, a couple of his kids. Did hand, you see how he got into that truck? That was a little, that was kind of nimble. Well, he's young, John. He's is that young. what it is? I got to get younger. Yeah, okay. We, we need got it. to take what he's taking. It looks good. Well, and who is, I, we should just point out, too, Charlie Lane was in the picture earlier, and he is our facilities manager at the city of Champlin, does a wonderful job, and a lot of what people see today is a result of his or, hard work and energy on this festival over at the city. You know, we should mention also that this year's title sponsor is, no coincidence, Mayor Ryan Sabus and Remax Realty. He is a realtor with Remax. And who you work with matters, says Ryan Sabus, and he is our title sponsor this year. Looking to buy or sell, he's there to help. That's correct. Ryan and Sabus. and if that's not enough, he will do your lawn. <laughs> Sabus Lawn Care. <laughs> 
Got that going too. Yes. So coming into the picture is our public works crew with one of their rigs. Um, snowplow, I'm just guessing. Absolutely a snowplow. It's not a farm implement. So I'm it's guessing. Not a <laughs> <laughs> Haven't been asked to write any of those. Uh, There we go. One, One of our fine public works employees with a couple of his kids up in the cab. And they do an outstanding job. I know this last this last winter, uh, they had their hands full. It. Uh, I was not here, but I'm told and read a lot on social media that you were challenged this year. Correct, Steve? Lots of snow that you didn't know about being down in Arizona. But yes, up here we had record snowfalls. Here's one of our utility vehicles showing Another off rig. some of the equipment with they generators. Are. Anybody need some sewer work? They are out and about in the neighborhoods tonight. <laughs> and Todd Tuminen, who probably knows all about the sewers in town, he's around to maybe consult. Consult tonight. Meet him down at the dance. What is this, Steve? Well, we're going to find out as it gets up here. <laughs> Holy cow. I had no idea we had equipment that do looked we, like this. Do job. we have something like this? <laughs> we do. Yeah, it's still part of our utility department. That is quite a contraption. It looks, woof. It's a gap vac. I mean, yes, right? If you don't have a gap vac, um, we do here in jail. We do. So <laughs> anybody who has gap back needs, uh, 421-8100, City of Champlain, you should give them a call. It's a big machine. Uh, plan ahead. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. God, I got to get one of those. Those are nice. They are nice. They are. I'm not sure where I'd park it. <laughs> they are awfully nice. John, we've got first students coming into view. These are, this is of course a, it's a national company, but we've got a local right here in Champlin branch of first student bus services. This just keeps going up, $22 an hour plus a signing bonus if you want to become a school bus driver for, for, for students. It wasn't all that long ago we were talking about requiring minimum wage of $15 and the market, I'm happy to see the market is doing it on its own. Uh, yes. But that certainly is the case. And one of Champlin's longest running operating businesses, right? Absolutely, and those bonuses have been $1,000, $2,000 just to sign on. Wow. And then $22 an hour. Well, so. they take care of the city's most important cargo, do they not? Our yep. kids. Absolutely. So very important. Well, and here we have Primrose School. Uh, they're actually a platinum level sponsor of this year's festival. We thank them for that, and we thank them for the service that they provide to our community for child care. Serving infants through private kindergarten and after school activities. Well, here's a business that I'm not familiar with. Sponsor Steve. Absolutely. Located just at the other end of my old law office building. They oh, are, are they really? They okay. are right along Champlin Drive, and they deal in collectibles. So north of 120th, Near west side of the highway on um, Champlin Drive. And you, if you haven't been in, you should pop in. Just wonderful collectibles, some oh, vintage really? cards. Yes, absolutely. I am told he ships them around the world right out of here. In Champlain. What a what a whole interesting business model that is, that card business. I don't fully understand it, but there's a lot of people that really love it. We've got Granite Mortgage with the oh, yeah. small pony. They are 
a gold level sponsor this year, John, and we thank them for that. Please get out and support them if you have mortgage needs. Oh. So, and they are located in what I will call the old Maple Bank site, but they took that business over, and I believe I've heard they've done very, very well. Uh, Granite Mortgage as well as Granite Bank. Yep, we've got them coming one after the other here, firing Frisbees right at us, John. I did not make the catch. You I'll did not make that full catch. Full disclosure, I, I missed that. a little disappointed on <laughs> yeah. that. Granite Bank and Granite Mortgage, gold level sponsors I, this You know, year. I remember yeah, back in the 90s Granite when Bank. we had zero banks in town. I mean, literally we had zero. We had, was it Northwest Bank? when they moved out of their building on the highway. And that was one of the goals was to see if we could get some finance companies. And then we had seven. <laughs> we took a lot of heat for that. And we're now referred uh, to as the Zurich of <laughs> North America. <laughs> Plenty of banking. It's called capitalism, folks. You never, you never know what uh, the market's going to deliver, but um, it's been good. Uh, with the development on the highway corridor. So here we have, speaking about development on the highway corridor, Pizza Ranch over at Champlain Plaza. Uh, that has been a business that's been here for quite a while. It is was has been well received, has been very successful. And they have great chicken and great pizza, folks. If you haven't tried it, check them out. Fresh salad, famous, famous cactus bread. If you haven't been there, John, bring the whole family. They've got a great buffet. Something for everyone at Champlain Pizza Ranch. Well, and the thing that caught my attention here, they have a fun zone. I, I'm all into the, I'm all in for a good fun zone. So, we've got Elm Creek Animal Hospital represented. Some good looking animals walking behind the float. They have been in Champlain for a number of years, oh, serving yes. our community more than 40 years to be exact. Look at the turnout here. Uh, they made a significant investment in the community. They're along the highway corridor, right across from the crossings, right? Um, and that really turned out to be a nice improvement over there. And we just slide right into a animal hospital, another one, North Brook. Um, back to back they are located in brooklyn park uh which they are also part i didn't know this uh, they're part of the elm creek family so they are expanding here in the northwest if you have an animal you most likely know something about northbrook and elm creek our providers in champlain this coming up into our view shortly is one of my favorites in terms of participatory and the exhibition that goes on with our professional karate studios. Gold level sponsors, Steve. They've been serving the Champlain area since 2012, and they were voted the best martial arts studio for nine years in a row. I believe that they're located in the um, the area behind Broadway, not Broadway, Pete, Broadway Pizza, or I should say um, Buffalo Wild Wings. Buffalo Wild Wings. And so if you're interested, give them a, a look. They also can be seen on the, uh, their website, which is www.professionalkaratestudios.com. They, they uh, put on wonderful premier summer day camps that are open to all each summer. Uh, so if you're interested in that, check them out. Anybody four or older, so we qualify. There's not a cap. There's not a cap. But you're not going to be going against a four-year-old, are you? I hope not. I would hope they would have. Oh. A I, I don't know if I'm more awkward getting beat by a four-year-old or taking advantage of the situation. <laughs> John, while we have a little break in the yeah. action, let's just quickly talk about tonight's bands can i just say one thing this is if you haven't been to father hennepin this is the year this is the first year we've got a full-blown redevelopment area the crossings with the amphitheater with the 
new event center uh, with it is just so much going on there and now the city is invested in putting a series of concerts and tonight and tomorrow is just a couple of those tonight we've got rockstar bob's rock show uh up at the up at the old chandler park um should be a great show it's going to be followed at 10 o'clock by a fireworks display each friday and so Get up there and check and them out tonight. They're supposed to be wonderful. Great tribute band. So cover charge, $10. We should mention that. So speaking of rock, we got Servant of Christ rocking us tonight with a little music. And they are a church that's located right off of Hayden Lake Road and West River Road. And they have candy, folks. You don't even have to. Susan Houston and her husband coming yes, back to Susan, <laughs> thank you. Good to Good see to you. Good to see Susan. Susan has been the announcer for this parade for many, many years and uh, a very loyal member over at the church for uh, more years than that. And a longtime employee of QCTV. And earlier than that, was she? No, she wasn't with the city of Champlin. I'm thinking about somebody else. Yeah. But a big contributor within the community. So we have TJGK Automotive Specialists. I'm thinking they know something about cars, Steve. Probably more than what you and I know. They're locally owned. And they got cute dogs. They do. What else do you need to know? They work on cars and they got great dogs. Well, their claim to fame is they offer transparency through their digital inspection. So oh. you get to see, as they do, what is exactly going on so with your you car. So you can learn something in the process and maybe do your own transmission work the next time around. Smart. St stop in and check it out. Okay, we will. One of my favorites, Culver's. Remember when we had Mr. Craig Culver come to town? Culver's ice cream just dropping oh my us Good off for a scoop of. Wow. We are making out like bandits this here at the Midway. This is unbelievable. We should tell yeah, people at home, we do, we do this for free, and we just do it for the candy. And every once in a while, <laughs> we get a coupon for free ice cream. Yes, this is oh, fabulous. That, that kind of rocks. Thank you, Culver's. Hey, so I drove from Arizona, as you know, and guess what I went by? More coupons. A, a huge sign that said the world's largest Culver's I went by in the state of Wisconsin. It was incredible. Yeah, uh-oh. We got, do we have an exhibition going here? Oh, oh no. boy. Oh, no. I get to break it? Oh, I'm going to try. Steve and... is going to try to break a board. He's... Oh, hey -oh, just no like way. that. No <laughs> uh, There it is. Uh, as we said earlier, you know, it's four to whatever. And Steve just shown that a, what are you, 72? 64. <laughs> 64. <laughs> How even that number hurt. <laughs> Can break a board. But, you know, I did you realize she went back and got the thinner board? Well, I may have broke my hand, too. <laughs> you kind of might have hurt yourself. <laughs> So, folks, this is not, I mean, it's not for the faint of heart, folks. You can get hurt doing this. So what do we got coming up, Steve, in the, in the lineup? It, John, we got the Anoka Hennepin Credit Union. There, there's a great place to invest your money. You need a car loan. No one has and offers better rates than your local credit union. And they have been uh, a long running business in the city of Champlin. So one of my favorite businesses, it is Champlin Sinclair. Um, Jim Merkel and company, uh, Diana, Jim and Diana Merkel, uh, longtime owners of that business. Uh, and they are always changing. Uh, Dino on the highway, yeah, letting people know ready. what the latest Drop holiday is. Where? If one nice of the few beautiful. businesses that if you want to get your guest Classic. served, they will pump it. They'll pump it for you, folks. You don't need to get out of your car. Stop over at Champlin Sinclair, and they're right off of 169 near Dayton Road. Last of the full service stations. Yes. 
got another break, so let's talk a little bit. We said we talked about what's going on tonight up at the crossings. Yeah. Saturday night, even bigger. Bigger. We, yeah, bigger. We've got Weekend Rockstar from 6 to 8 p.m. They're a high-energy cover band based in the Twin Cities. Powerful vocals, uh, followed by Expedition, and they're going to be going from 9 p.m. to midnight. That's at D.C. Chandler Park. You need a valid ID to purchase alcohol if you're up there, but it's open to all ages. Um, an all-day ticket is only $20. So for $20, you can go up, watch bands from 6 p.m. all the way to midnight. If you purchase pre-sale tickets, that goes down to $15, and you can do that at ci.champlin.mn.us. These are all fabulous bands on Saturday. They're anticipating crowds of 2,500 maybe. Mm -hmm. um, it's just going to be a wonderful time up there. So. Well, as we have heard from people too, so last night up at the crossings they had dueling pianos, 1,500 people on a Thursday night. Uh, so they are expecting good numbers. If you're planning to go, we would encourage you to um, make sure that you have good arrangements in terms of where to park and how to get in and get there early um, and enjoy, but be safe, folks. But uh, uh, great bands both tonight and tomorrow over at Chandler Park. You know, we see... We're getting a look at some of the uh, folks scattered along the parade route. Yeah. And honestly, tonight could not be better weather. Just sunny, crisp, not overly hot, and just a wonderful night to be Bad out here enjoying Father Hennepin. How many years would we sit out here and there would be either a threat of rain or we would actually, uh, there would be a mist or some rain at some point during the evening, but uh, none of that in sight tonight. Wonderful. John, we've got the Champlain Park High School Marching Rebels. Of course, our home school marching band travel all, all over Minnesota. Wisconsin putting on performances, earn accolades everywhere they go. Just a polished unit. Coaching the area where they are recorded and judged. And as they come up the route just a little further, we will mute our mics and let the viewers listen in on the music of the Champlain Park High School Marching Rebels.
That is one of two bands that you will hear today. Champlin Park later on, we will hear from Maple Grove. And the Steve? Marching Rebels were led by drum majors Mikey Beasley and Amara Coles under the direction of Steve Johnson and Amanda Mostrian. John, a little known fact, I did not know this. In 2016, the Marching Rebels appeared at the Liberty Bowl in Memphis, Tennessee and won the grand champion in both the parade and field competitions. Just this past year participated in the 2022 New Orleans Sugar Bowl halftime performance. So wow, this is that a is cool. Well-traveled group. Well, it is a very highly accomplished group of kids. Uh, coming through the school down in Champlin Park. And here we have CDAA Youth Lacrosse, ages 6 to 15. This has just been a growing sport in the city of Champlin. You see some of the Champlin's finest young lacrosse players out there. So uh, Champlin uh, Lacrosse, in your background, any lacrosse? Uh, briefly on Cape Cod, played a little lacrosse, oh. yes. Uh, as a youth? Uh, no, adult. Adult, getting together with family or friends out there? Uh, it was a little club lacrosse team. Oh, really? And learned how to play it a little bit. Okay. Look who we have here. Oh, you know what? He, he owes me a phone call. I'm doing good, John. It's Senator Hoffman. And Along he came, with County Commissioner Kevin County Anderson. Commissioner, yes, and he came here to respond to my phone call, I think. He owes us a phone call. He We've does. been trying to get him on our podcast. So we just a moment on that. So we, Steve and I, we do a little, little self-promotion here, but we do a podcast called The Champlin Project, which basically is interesting historical look at development in the past as well as things that have gone on in Champlin. So if you're interested, Spotify, Amazon, uh, Apple, uh, our podcast is on that. And we have a website, www.thechamplinproject.com. But hopefully in the near future, you'll be listening and you'll hear Senator John Hoffman on that show. That's right. He's going to be an upcoming guest. So we're looking forward to that. We've got the St. Paul Winter Carnival Vulcan Unit. These these guys have been around for a long time, John. Yes, and always a regular, always a regular in the event. And I guess they're looking to do makeup uh, touch-ups with people in the audience. They're looking so. to put a mustache, no, and it's headed no. right for you. <laughs> I guess people go for that. Yeah. They really want the mustache. <laughs> Very youthful, the Vulcans out here having a great time. What a Father nice Hennepin. touch for the kids. And, and uh, I guess there's some adults that maybe fall for that. A couple years younger, maybe. Yeah, it might make us look younger. I don't know. We'll it's see. the look in St. Paul, though. I mean, yes. everybody's got the look. So, Scouts of Champlin, uh, always a staple in this event. Well, John, you missed Minnesota Renaissance Festival. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they have a little unit up there throwing some candy around. Of course, that happens each summer, August 19th through October 1st, plus Labor Day. And, and now coming up. Please welcome the Scouts. Bunch of Scouts. I was a product of uh, the scouting program. Uh, Cub Scout, Weeblos, Boy Scouts. Um, I, hopefully that doesn't turn people off knowing that I'm a product of that. But uh, actually uh, a great way to uh, learn the, uh, the values in life their whole mission is to help build confidence while teaching youth about being good citizens mm -hmm. you and i both were part of the program briefly yeah i made it through we Below's. how about you i went i was actually uh, order of the arrow i was a senior patrol leader i did not make it i have two brothers that are uh, eagle scouts i'm a life i only got to life I, back when i was a scout the the amount of work you had to do to get a mirror badge was incredible they uh, later on they just kind of gave them out <laughs> <laughs> so, um, at least that's my story. I'll stick with it. So, is this Kids Rack? It Love Kids Rack. sure is. They're a family-owned clothing business, which has been yeah. serving Champlin for 18 years. 
They supply resale and closeout clothing, toys, equipment for kids, infants, teens. They also buy buy your yes. stuff, so they pay cash for kids' stuff. And buy, sell, it. trade. So if you're not looking to buy something, but you're trying to get rid of stuff you have, buy, sell, trade. Kids Rack, it's the place to go. Right in the mall behind Dairy Queen off of 114th and, uh, and 169th. It is, which is it also in the same neighborhood as Trailhead. Uh, very, very I, I had. I didn't never bought a bike there, but I've had bike issues that I took my bike there, and they were able to help me out, and were always wonderful uh, in terms of my uh, my needs. Trailheadcycling.com. If you're looking for them on uh, on the web, uh, they also have a store in Plymouth, 55 and County Road 6. My family has purchased two bikes from them and goodness. had wonderful experiences. Thank you. And I think they actually have some clubs, which is great. They have some clubs that meet there, and they will then use the trailheads and then get into uh, what's available over at the Elm Creek uh, Park Reserve. I know what my, a great asset that is. I know my wife just retired this year from her long teaching career. She had her last day on Wednesday, and her retirement present to herself is going to be an e-bike from Trailhead. Really? Yes. Wow. That would be nice. I, You know... Every once in a while, you got to just say, you know what? I'm just going to flip the switch and I'm just going to ride up this hill. Yes. It yeah. makes life a lot easier. With yeah. The and e I love those tires. If you get kind of the fat tire with the e-bike, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll Does she have a particular brand that she's looking at yet? or I, I don't know, but I know she, is, she has test ridden an e-bike up there and i think oh. she's got her eye on a particular one so okay. i will see that in the garage shortly i suspect well great there's a lot of great places to do that around here that's for sure so i'm sure she's going to love that so i am i'm hearing noise steve and it's wonderful noise it sounds like we may have a band but what do we got going on before that before we get you know, we talked about the bands this evening and the bands on Saturday night, but there's so many other things going on. Saturday, we've got the Kids Carnival from noon to midnight. We've got Kids Half Mile Fun Run, 10.30 a.m., a bags tournament at noon, Kids Bingo at 1, Family Trivia at 2.30, Wiggle and Jiggle Jam for the Kids at 4 p.m., a business expo, of course, the Ice Cream Social going on all weekend, karaoke for all ages, and this year, new to Father Hennepin, is a talent contest on Sunday. That'll be up at the amphitheater starting at noon. We'll see what kind of talent Champlin folks have. And I understand Mayor Sabas is one of those on the judging panel. Um, and I'm excited. It would be interesting to see. And I'm expecting, my expectations are high for this community. I'm sure we'll have some really good talent. John, here is our second band of the evening. It is Maple Grove Senior High Crimson Marching Band. Again, we will mute our mics and let our viewers listen to the sounds of the Maple Grove Crimson.
There you have it, the Maple Grove Crimson Marching Band, our neighbors to the southwest. They put a lot of time and effort in, into practicing. They did, and so we have Danny Nadu coming into our picture, and he is running for, would I say right, State Senate? Is that? State House, I guess, excuse me. We've had a little... Uh, redistricting up here with the lines i'm not familiar with all the new lines up here so uh but running for the house seat that represents a good part of champlin right yep and he due to some of the redistricting he is a current member of the house of representatives he's representing parts of rogers dayton and champlin okay and is obviously uh launching his campaign to be re-elected here coming up in 2024. Okay. That's right. We now have two representatives representing Champlin, correct? Yeah, and he's just coming into view here in the blue shirt. There's Danny shaking okay. some hands. So it looks like the Metropolitan Mosquito Control folks yes. passed Danny yes. up somewhere. They <laughs> did. They, they, on the, uh, our lineup here, they must have passed him up. He was shaking too many hands, Steve. John, so, here's a new one here. Yeah. Filipino Homestyle Eats. It looks like Kumain. Let's what do you know about them? You know, have you? They're new. I have not heard of them. They are absolutely That's new, sad. but they are a food trailer and restaurant. Okay. I love Filipino food, so that is something I want to check out. Yeah. Well, that's something that is now big and going to get bigger in Champlin with the crossings, is the food trucks and with these this summer music series that they're running with the food trucks. Um, a lot of different options up there, and this, we've been hearing that there's been so many people that some of the trucks have actually run out of food. They are selling out already up there on Thursday nights, and I suspect you can check and out Kumain on one of these Thursday hockey. evenings. Those hockey Ooh, nets mean hockey. one thing, John. What Champlin, does it mean, Steve? Champlin Park Youth Hockey. Let's go, Rebels. Are you familiar with the Champlin Park Youth Hockey Group? Just vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> Having spent what seems like a lifetime in Champlin Park Youth Hockey. I bet. Yes. Absolutely a great organization. Serving kids ages 3 to 15, both boys and girls programs. Seasons run October through March. Thank you. So, thank you very this much. is our friends from Target and Spot. And now please welcome Target and Bullseye. You get this Bullseye. wrong every I get it year. wrong every year. My wife actually worked for Target yes. back in the day. The mascot so, Bullseye, okay. not Spot. <laughs> um, of course, Champlin home to Super Target. Just I mean, you and I both go back to when they, they moved here in 2001. That was a big time. They were one of the companies that came along and kind of gave some respect to the city. And we greatly appreciated their involvement and decision back then. Well, it gave us our first place to buy a pair of pants that wasn't sweatpants. <laughs> it was. You could buy you could buy a tie in Champlin if you wanted to. Yes. That so was that a was big, a big deal, deal, folks. Yeah, that was a big deal, folks. Um, we brought in the seven banks, and then we brought in Target where you could spend that money. We've got representatives from Champlin Park cheerleading. They cheer at varsity football and basketball games and also compete in game day division well how can you not win with this type of group behind you exactly supporting you in lots of spirit so they compete also amongst other schools correct just in cheerleading would i be fair in saying that you are absolutely it is not correct. just about uh the sport but it's about their own sport correct okay Athletes in their own regard. Were you ever a cheerleader when back in high school? Did you ever do I, any of that? I did not. Uh, 
I think there's more male cheerleaders today than perhaps in our day. That's probably the truth. Well, you know, quite frankly, some of the best athletes are the cheerleaders uh, and the gymnasts that are in those ranks, uh, to be sure. So, so we have Rebels Wrestling. We have Takedown Wrestling. Uh, they present youth and high school wrestling. It's a great sport for building confidence, condition, skill building, and teamwork. Um, and a fairly successful program at that. Um, and we have two uh, grapplers going at it on the mat. Um, is hopefully. That, is that a wrestler taking oh, down council member Tom Moe? Was that, that was, was that Tom Moe? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I think he would have been taken down much earlier. <laughs> oh, Tom, Tom. Okay. Oh, look what we have here. Stars. Productions. Shooting Stars Productions. They have a summer theater camp, Steve. I don't know if, if, hey. if they've closed out the season, but you still have an option. July 17th to the 21st or August 14th to 18th, you can still sign up. They rehearse in Osseo. They're a Christian theater company building confidence, self-esteem in a humble way. You can check them out at SSC ptheater.org and get involved. It's a great way to get involved in theater. And here we have Phillips for Congress. Everybody's invited to join them for a coffee and a conversation and bubbles. I guess bubbles is a big part of it, folks. Does the conversation have to happen in that van? I, you know, on a hot day, I don't want to. I, I don't want to go in there. It does not look like it has AC. <laughs> I would prefer the conversation be held outdoors, or perhaps in a coffee shop with AC. That's me. And you know what? You're and you're picking up. You're picking up the coffee too. So, United as one for. So this has got to be. Is this soccer, Steve? Absolutely, it is, John. And offers youth sport, soccer sports. You're the youth soccer sports guy. Sports well, they're a nonprofit club. They're offering soccer programs, players ages 4 to 19. Again, we're ineligible. Uh, ah. They are members of the Twin City Soccer League and Minnesota Youth Soccer Association. They host the annual four spring kickoff tournament locally here. You can visit them at forcesc.org for information if you're a soccer player. I'm I'm really sensing age discrimination in a lot of the organizations we have in this town. 4 to 18, 4 to 19, we are excluded from nearly everything, John. Somebody wow. just scored well, on you. They kicked a ball they, and you They kicked a ball and I missed it. So maybe I should be discriminated against. You <laughs> you're out. <laughs> About tryouts so i mean they don't take anybody either so you have to try out and you have to prove yourself they're just not going to take you because you because you showed up that is an absolute fact <laughs> john do you know on the medallion hunt which oh. is always a hotly contested thing at Father yeah. Hennepin. It's a $500 prize. Have you heard whether they have found the medallion? Or I not? could be wrong, but, uh, you know, I have been, <clears throat> even though I live in Arizona, I've been tracking what's been going on the weeks leading up to this, this parade. And I thought I had read a week or two ago that somebody got the medallion right away. Oh, wow. Now, I could be wrong. Uh, if I am, I apologize, but uh, I know typically they do a very, they make it very difficult. I want to caution viewers that this could be fake news on the part of John <laughs> Cox, who is out there actively looking for the medallion. <laughs> Uh, you're retired now, so $500 is that's a lot, a lot of, money. of That's a lot of money. That, um, you know, the number of buffets I can hit that are before <laughs> 3 o'clock in the afternoon <laughs> at the special rate uh, and then hit the early movie are incredible. Uh, Jesus loves you. Grace Fellowship. FindGrace.com. There's nothing else to say but that. It is just a wonderful place uh, to grow your spirit at Grace. Hello, friend. If you want to know more, go on fungrace.com. 
Lots of Champlin residents. So Frequent you and I fellowship. have been doing this for, I think this is our 16th year, if I have that right. Um, I don't know if we've seen a better turnout. This is, uh, we thought at the, when we first arrived that it was a little slow, but uh, this turnout for this year's festival and parade is outstanding. And maybe part of that has to do with the weather. Uh, maybe the excitement about the crossings and the bands tonight. Uh, but there definitely is a vibe. Uh, that people are really enjoying this community event. And school just got done, right? Yeah, yes. Last day of classes was Wednesday, so I think all that pent-up summer excitement is here. And people are going to be eating cheese curds and <laughs> listening to bands. You can just you just look at the kids' faces, and you can just tell that something exciting just happened. <laughs> and obviously, it was this week was the last week of school, and they're ready to get on with summer. We're good, thank you. Grace Fellowship. Grace Thank you so much. Up some water for us. A little Thank water you. from Grace Fellowship. Grace that is greatly com. appreciated. Thank you. What a wonderful float. We really love our city. I like that message. Yes, it is. It's a great one. And, you, you know, we were talking about this earlier. You know, it's great to see the people. It's great to see the people who put the time and energy together to participate in the parades. Uh, a lot of people like to watch them, but it's been a little bit of a challenge for people to actually participate in them. And so uh, it is appreciated those who uh, volunteer their time to build their floats, their units, and to walk the route want to turn back to our schedule because we've got yeah. another brand new event it no. is we do it is a mayor pancake breakfast oh. with a twist john yeah what's that the twist this year i spoke to mayor sabus and yeah. he has arranged for mimosas at the mayor's breakfast Unbe so he is picking up that I think he probably got it donated, but it was wow. his doing. And so, yes, if you want to show up, have breakfast with the mayor, and partake in a free Bloody Mary or mimosa, I guess that is going on on Sunday, June 11th. Well, and I see the note here. It says, make sure to let them know, uh, give them the code word, Mayor Sabas. So... <laughs> Yeah, that is wonderful. I mean, I think that'll be outstanding. Nothing better than on a Sunday morning. Uh, you've watched the bands the night before you get up. Um, hopefully you made it home and then you make it back down there. But start the day off with a bloody and uh, and then what else? Maybe get a cone later on over at Dunning School. So um, and you it, can't ask for more. On this. <laughs> no, you cannot. And, of course, we've got the youth fishing contest at the Mill Pond. That was a staple for many years. That starts at 1 p.m. Now, I have to ask you, because for years the fishing contest was a mayor thing. It, it is now just a fishing contest. Was it a, was it a mayor thing when you were the mayor? It was. It was the mayor's fishing contest. Apparently that switched to a breakfast. With, <laughs> with bloodies. Yeah. <laughs> but but you had to, my recollection in the old days is that you had to catch a fish bigger than the mayor. And with your skills, we almost went broke. Yeah. So no. that was, <laughs> I, I think that's what led to the free bloodies. That was actually cheaper <laughs> than, than paying people to beat the mayor on a catching a little sunny over yeah, at the it pond. It was not beating the mayor. We had, <laughs> but when a lot of fish were caught, it was a lot of fun. So. What kind of fish do you, you, you have a lot of history over at the pond, Mill Pond. What did you catch over there? Every year, someone won with, there were different categories. Someone would catch a northern every year. Oh. Someone would catch, of course, a bullhead every year. Somebody mm. would catch, you know, a sunny or crappie every once There's in a while. There's a couple of fish in there. You, you don't even know what it is, right? I'm thinking. They're hybrids. They're yes. hybrids. Oh, Champlin Park dance team. Now, this is something I know that you did when you were in high school. Um, and you were, because I've seen you on the dance floor. You obviously are schooled. It's not something you just picked up at the, at the high school rally. But uh, here they are, some of your, I guess, mentees uh, following in your footsteps. And they're from Champlin Park High School, the dance team. 
They also participate at football games and dance shows and pep fests. My oldest daughter was a part of the Champlain oh, really? Park dance team, so I am familiar with this group and how hard they work and train. And, uh, and they and they competed against other schools, correct? Absolutely. Okay. How did they do? How did your daughter do in her team when she was involved? They were good. Champlain Park is always good. Take a look. Well, I have to say, it does look like something that would be a lot of fun. Yeah, I I went to a couple of Zumba lessons one time, and I, and I just know this would not be something that I would be good at. <laughs> um, but I like the pom-poms. That would be something that I could probably do something with. Well, hey, I just realized, did you mention, and it already happened, we have one thing that you and I could actually go to, and it was held two days ago, the senior luncheon. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> so that was, that. Well, okay, so that's, I, other than that, everything's like kids bingo or wiggle jiggle jam. I don't, we really. We missed it. We, missed, we, yeah, we <laughs> slept in on, on Wednesday, and I really don't want to do the bloody Sunday morning. <laughs> So. We've got the Dayton Fire Department. Now they're back to the red that oh, you yeah. typically see from most communities. Yeah. Um, but these are our neighbors to the west. You know, for a small community, they actually maintain their very own fire department. You know, that in itself is impressive. But, you know, Dayton isn't Dayton of the 1990s either. They're a community on the, on the go. Uh, much like Champlin was in the 90s, uh, they are growing immensely and have a huge future in front of them. Dayton Fire and Rescue. Do their, uh, is, that's not their fire truck. They don't blare music when they come on the scene, do they? No, I, the music is not coming from the fire truck. Okay, because I thought that was pretty hip. <laughs> yeah. I have to believe, John, that this is spark music and dance. I think uh, the Four Soccer Club and Dean Phillips passed them up somewhere along the line. And sure enough, it is spark music and dance. And what is that, Steve? You know, they have kids from their rock band, oh. class performing, and students from their dance and music lesson programs participating. They offer dance classes, rock band classes, as well as private and group music lessons. Did you ever play an instrument? I did. I was a guitar player and a trumpet player. You were a guitar player? Yes. Could you, if, if I threw a guitar in your hand, could you do something? Absolutely not. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. That was a long lifetime ago. I could use some lessons from Sparks. Yeah. Spark, I should say. Well, here we have T. Will's. What do I have? T. Will Sports. Not picking up T. Will Sports. Now, where are they located? John, they are brand new to the Father Hennepin Festival. Yeah. Their little bio says very little about them other than welcome them, and so we will do that. But T. Will Sports making their first appearance here at Father Hennepin. It's going to be our mission to do some research on them. We will have to. We will have to. Well, well, welcome. It's always great to see uh, new entries into the festival and the parade. Now, if $22 wasn't enough to be a school bus driver, School Bus Dot Jobs is offering $25 an hour and a $5,000 bonus. $25 an hour, $5,000 sign on bonus. School Bus Dot Jobs, folks. Driving a 100% electric bus there, John? Yes. Very impressive. And we have some of their...
drivers here today North walking probably for 25 bucks an hour, I'm guessing. North Star Bus Lines, yeah. that's who we have with us. Yeah. Family comes first. Their drivers are family, John. They're looking for individuals. They'll help pay for you to get your CDL license. Wow. And your Class B license. Okay. Well, you know, that is so, again, we talk about how important the cargo that they take care of. Now, they're starting at $19 an hour, folks. So, um I think the, the theme here this year at Father Hennepin is if you want to drive a bus, you can make some money. Yes. <laughs> There we go. Oh, getting things thrown at us right and left. Granite Bank is. That was is, Andy Singleton in the city shuttle bus. I think, uh, Steve, I think we are coming to the conclusion of this 2023 parade. Well, when I see the Public Works garbage. Cushman arriving. I know that that signifies that we are at the end of the parade route. The shuttle bus has arrived not to take us back to our car, but maybe someone no. important like like some of some of the celebrities. So uh, what a fabulous parade this was. 2023, 60 units, two marching bands. We'll find out later who the winner was. Uh, but a great time was had by many. Yes, and the weekend is just kicking off. Make sure you get up to the crossings. Check out all that is going on up there. Uh, John, it's been a pleasure. 16 years in the books. Great, great. to see you again. Thank For you. those of you at home watching, we hope you enjoyed this coverage of the 2023 Father Hennepin Day Parade and make sure to check out all the facilities. We will see you next time. Bye.